Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the most unlikely set to be financially relevant, and it is the Dark. And the Dark used to be known for two cards, Maze of If and Blood Moon. And if you didn't get those two cards, you were pretty much not going to get any good cards. So the Dark was not a good time in Magic. I remember playing it, and one of the stronger cards was Ragman. And I remember that was actually the card we were trying to get at the time. Overall, the cards were relatively powerless, uh, incredibly weak, and not something that anyone would want to open. Uh, we only opened them because we wanted to get the Ragman and Ball Lightning. So those were the two cards that were the trendsetters back in the day. It was not really Blood Moon because it wasn't like fetch lands into shock lands and there wasn't modern so blood moon only really became good later on in time uh, preacher was never really good mage of if was good but it wasn't an edh staple it is today because we didn't have edh goblin wizard i don't remember that being good city of shadows not good mana vortex not good stone calendar not good so overall, not many people purchased this set, uh, which created a... I remember just boxes and boxes of this at a store called BC Collectibles in my local hometown in Pennsylvania and Westchester. And BC Collectibles just had just so much of it, they couldn't get rid of it. And actually, there was another game store. I forget its name. It was next to the Michaels, across the street from the Michaels in Exton. And it went bankrupt because of the dark. You might think that's kind of funny, but it's actually not that funny because they just had boxes and boxes of it and no one wanted play magic. No one wanted to buy packs. No one wanted anything to do with magic at the dark. So let's talk about what happened here. So we have to begin and we'll probably end with Maze of If. And the reason Maze of If is so interesting is it's always been valuable and it's an uncommon so it's also not on a reserve list. So this card used to be $50 once EDH really became what we know of today. It was one of the must-haves in EDH. Now, there wasn't many copies of it, and the fact that it was not on a reserve list didn't really strike anyone. So today, not being on a reserve list is kind of a big deal. Back then, it was much less of a big deal. So now we have a scenario where the most valuable card in Maze of was Maze of If at Uncommon, and people started opening packs because they were hoping to get Maze of If, and because there was an Uncommon. Uncommons were done differently. I forget um, how they were done, but there were some Uncommons that were more less likely to be opened than other ones. I think Maze of If was on a short printed Uncommon sheet. Uh, I remember it, the odds were not exactly like they are today with Uncommons. So Maze of If was the one card you wanted to see. Uh, but today we have a lot of spikes and these spikes are all recent. So if you have a, the dark collection and or you hit one in a flea market, it's actually worth buying into. It's even worth buying a box because at the end of the day, some of these cards are outrageously expensive and for what they are, of course. And it's because they are on the reserve list. The reserve list has made it different. Uh, the cards that used to be very bad and not valuable are now still very bad, but valuable. And that has created buying out, buy out, buy out, buy out. If you can't buy out beta and alpha, well, why don't you buy out the dark? It's relatively the same age. And on the flip side, it's incredibly cheap or it used to be incredibly cheap until recently. So Goblin Wizard, I remember the card was like okay, but it did get better when you had more goblin cards. It's still, it's still very interesting to see at fourteen dollars because that's not a price point I would associate with this card in terms of power level, and it's been going up and down, up and down. And the dark is a fascinating set from the perspective that. You could find an old collection where it's all the dark, the person's taking out the maze of ifs and the ball lightnings, and you could find a lot of value in there. So these collections are out there. These collections were Mirage, these collections were the dark. 
I mean, City of Shadows, look at the graph. It was like a dollar. It was less than a dollar a few months ago. And now it's over 13. So when you talk about the ability to buy collections, that still exists today. And what's fascinating is there's opportunity. And the opportunity is definitely not in standard. And it's definitely not in modern. The opportunity is buying old collections. And it used to be you wanted an alpha and beta and unlimited. And if alpha, beta, unlimited were not in the collection, then you didn't buy it. Today, even something like the Dark, which if you talk to someone who played Magic during the period, would never assume that this card, City of Shadows, would be over $13. They wouldn't assume this card would ever be $3. You wouldn't assume it's even $0.30. Cents. And that is truly the power of Magic the Gathering. And what's happening right now is there's always opportunity. But the opportunity is not in the same place. The opportunity is in buying these old collections with a ton of... I guarantee you there's a collection right now with 100 copies of this card. Some game store that can never sell it. These are cards that no one wanted to buy. And because no one wanted to buy them and they were all buying Ball Lightning. And people were opening packs for Ball Lightning and Ragman. There was hundreds of copies of this. I guarantee you there's a collection today, maybe on Craigslist, maybe somewhere else, where the person played during the dark and has no concept that this card is $13. Blood Moon, I mean, Blood Moon did get better, and Blood Moon is a card that people know is valuable today, but back then, there's no way. Non-basics were kind of cool, but it wasn't like... The reason this card is so expensive because of modern... And modern, you have Fets into Shockland, right? Well, back in the day, we didn't have Shocklands and we didn't have Fetchlands. So, and we didn't even have the modern format. A lot of things has changed. So, Alpha Beta, people kind of know that it's valuable. If you never play Magic, you still know Alpha Beta is valuable. You have no concept as the Dark. You have no concept on Alliance, Ice Age. It would be very difficult if I play Magic during the dark and I quit during Invasion, which a lot of people quit during Invasion. A lot of people quit during Ice Age. They quit during Invasion. Macadia Mask was considered a very weak set in terms of playability. And then they quit during Lorwyn. There's a reason those cards are very expensive because no one had them. No one has them today because no one opened packs. I would not be able to assume that the Dark would be a good set. I would not assume there's any other card. Maybe two Blood Moon Maids of If would be over $10. But there's a lot of cards in this set now worth $10. There's a lot of cards in this set worth $5. If you compare it to today's standard set, this set is far more valuable than anything in standard. Compare it to Kaladas, or let's compare it to the most recent set. Uh, Ixlon. Is there a $50 card in Ixlon, even as a Mythic? No. Are there multiple $10, $20 cards as many? No. Are there as many $5 cards? No. Is there a $20, $17 uncommon? No. Yeah. So, huh. Right? Preacher, which I don't know. I mean, this card just recently popped up in price, is $19. That is along the lines of Vraska, which is one of the more expensive myths, myths, uh, mythics. Wow, I say mystics. I don't know why I'm saying mystics, but mythics. Would you rather buy a box of the dark for the same price or the box of, I don't know, Ixlan or Kalidas? I think you would take the box of the dark because you can make your money back from the box at the same price. Now, obviously, the box price of the dark has increased as the prices have increased. It is an older box. And that's what I like about it. Um, bulk. I really, really enjoy, like bulk collections right now. Uh, older collections because there's no way most people who play during this time are going to put one and one together and figure out that the dark is valuable. In fact, they probably sell you this collection for like 100 bucks and have like 100 copies of City of Shadows and think they, they got they rip you off, right? And that's why I love about having bulk old cards is that sometimes, like those pirate cards I have, there's no way I knew that pirate card would ever be good. 
but now it's five bucks. I own a few hundred copies of them. Even Mana Vortex is a twelve dollar card. I mean, come on, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, you gotta be kidding. It was pennies. It was pennies until recently, and now because it's on the reserve list, it's quote EDH playable. It is twelve dollars and seventy seven cents. No one during this period time period would ever assume this card would be more than twelve cents. Just not possible. But now it is. So there is a lot of opportunity out there, and the dark is the my favorite set from I don't actually own that much of the dark. I know not positive why. I own lots of fallen empires. So I have a lot of rainbow veils, but I don't have a lot of city of shadow. I don't think I have any, which is surprising. But at the same time, it creates opportunity because I know where to buy them. Or I know where to buy collections which may have them. It's always a risk. You're never ever going to get the best deal without having a risk of it. And yes, you're going to buy collections that suck. But I'm okay with it because maybe the cards that suck today are $50 cards tomorrow. Or not $50, $5 cards tomorrow, which would be fantastic because now you own 500 copies of those. It's worth the risk in my opinion but it's, you know, it depends, right? Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.